All right, let me make one thing clear. I fucking love The Matrix. So don't give me too much hate after you've seen this video. Welcome to Sci-Fi Night. I'm your host, Sebastian Vendel Martinez, and in this Sci-Fi Night special, we're checking out how one of the most influential sci-fi action movies ever got influenced itself. In 1999, a film was released that changed things. Movies, culture, fashion. Okay, no, this is not our special on the Blair Witch Project, also released in 1999. However, you can check out that video in the link in the description. No, this time we're checking out another 1999 classic, the film that made us all go, whoa, The Matrix. This sci-fi action epic by Lana and Lily Wachowski revolutionized filmmaking and visual effects. It made it popular to wear sunglasses all the fucking time, and it changed the way movies looked, made bullet time a staple of action, and created a mythology that would live on through animated flicks, video games, comic books, and more. Or did it? So let's face it, all filmmakers draw inspiration from somewhere, and the Wachowskis are no different. Alright, so let's just start out with some basic background info in case you were just awakened into reality. Oh, and if you haven't seen the film, then prepare for spoilers. But if you haven't seen the film, I'm not exactly sure that you're a human being watching this channel. Ignorance is bliss. In The Matrix, we follow a Mr. Anderson, aka Neo, a hacker who comes into contact with a shady group of people who question the reality around him. We eventually find out that our world is an illusion perpetrated by hyper-intelligent machines using our bodies for power. Neo joins the rebels, turns into some kind of space Jesus, and saves the day up until two shitty sequels came along to make things confusing. Alright, so that concept is definitely very cool and interesting, but not really that unique. So, in the next part here, I will actually be spoiling the ending to two really good movies, so if you don't want the endings of Dark City and the 13th Floor spoiled for you, just click the time code, like speed up to this code that's here, and you'll get right through it. Okay, so if we look at things on a story level, let's get into Dark City, which was released 1998, a year before The Matrix. In the film, we follow a character thrust into a strange situation chased by spooky, soulless officials, all while he begins questioning his reality, only to discover that the world he inhabits isn't real, and in fact is an illusion created by the other beings who want to use humans for their own gain. Yeah, so replace the agents with his creepy bald men, and you've kind of got the same story, and there's even more inspiration drawn from the 13th floor. In the 13th floor, we get a very similar film, which is also about a different kind of virtual reality, where our protagonist eventually discovers that the reality he's been living in isn't really the real reality, I guess you can say. And yeah, despite those similarities, there's also a whole lot of trench coats in all these movies. And yeah, even if you already kind of know the story now, I still highly recommend seeing both Dark City and the 13th floor. They're fucking great. Still though, it's hard not to notice similarities not only in the overall story, but even in the visuals, especially when it comes to Dark City. Yeah, and the visual similarities don't even stop there. The 1995 animated film Ghost in the Shell is a bit of a visual masterpiece, but it also bears quite a few similarities to The Matrix. This is done in its content of artificial intelligence and questioning of reality once more. Also, in order to display the great visual similarities, let me leave it to Robert Grigsby Wilson's video comparison, which also shows a lot of the other visual similarities that The Matrix has with other movies. Let's start off with Ghost in the Shell. As you can see, there's quite a bit. When it comes to action, The Matrix is also revolutionizing, but many of the action set pieces were actually inspired by other shots, a lot of them from Hong Kong action flicks. I don't believe it. It's not possible. Here, take a look. Once again, credit to Robert Grigsby Wilson. Alright, so we've obviously covered quite a bit of similarities, but we've obviously saved the best for last. I'm sure you're thinking you've seen it all, but the biggest similarity isn't so much a likeness between it and something else, but it's basically seeing The Matrix as a direct adaptation. In 1994, famed writer Grant Morrison, perhaps best known for Sandman and his Batman run, finished and released his comic The Invisibles. 
In it, we follow the character Jack Frost, who at first unwillingly ends up with a group of anti-establishment rebels. He ends up more or less being their messiah, just like in The Matrix, and realizes that reality is an illusion controlled by other beings, but instead of robots, it's gross insect-like demons. The leader of these rebels, King Mob, is pretty damn similar to Morpheus, and the way they morph in and out of reality in the real world is reminiscent of how our heroes travel in and out of The Matrix. Oh, and at one point, King Mob gets captured and tortured by the villains. Again, sound familiar? So out of all the works I've presented, there's most similarities between Grant Morrison's The Invisibles and The Matrix, and not just in terms of visuals, but the actual content as well. This is actually no coincidence. It's been pretty well documented that on the set of The Matrix, copies of Morrison's The Invisibles was handed out for visual reference. Stop. Let me out. Let me out! The Wachowskis are not only comic book fans, but also comic book writers. So knowledge of the Invisibles would be very hard to miss, and Morrison has had it confirmed that the Invisibles was used for reference, something that he used to be angry about, but has more or less let go in a rather professional way. In an interview with Suicide Girls, he said the following, I love the first Matrix movie, which I think is a real work of cinematic genius and very timely, but I've now heard from several people who worked on the Matrix, and they've all confirmed that they were given Invisibles books as reference. That's how it is. I'm not angry about it anymore, although at one time I was because we made millions from what was basically a Xerox of my work, and to be honest, I would be happy with just one million, so I didn't have to work 13 hours every fucking day, including weekends. He even added that the two sequels, The Matrix Reloaded and The Matrix Revolutions, would have been better if the Wachowskis had kept on nicking ideas instead of making something about, quote, boring Catholic theology. Something I'm kind of inclined to agree with. So does this mean that we should all hate and boycott the Matrix? Well, one, we're about two decades too late, and two, eh, not really. Let's face it, pretty much every bit of entertainment we see or hear is in some way inspired by other, either made up or real events. Well, that's exactly my point, exactly. Star Wars is more or less a retelling of Akira Kurosawa's The Hidden Fortress. The one thing, uh about Hidden Fortress is it did influence me in doing Star Wars, because as I was beginning to uh, write the screenplay and put it together. Alien is quite possibly the best sci-fi horror film ever made, but it definitely drew a lot of inspiration from it, the terror from beyond space, as well as Planet of the Vampires. I really enjoyed Black Swan and it earned Natalie Portman an Oscar, but it's so similar to the Japanese anime Perfect Blue that it borders on plagiarism. And the Terminator is a classic action flick. That bar with tons of elements from the works of Harlan Ellison. The thing is, it's not the similarities or inspiration that bothers me, it's the lack of recognition. When you have two works of art this similar, the one so clearly influenced from the other, the least you can do is respect the original work by clearly stating the inspiration required to make it. I still love The Matrix. I mean, it's probably influenced me and my life as much as Star Wars, and it's still one of the most influential films of the past two decades. But that doesn't grant it other benefits other movies wouldn't have had. So when you praise The Matrix for its awesome ideas, visuals, and set pieces, just be sure to pay respect to the original source material as well, because without that, we'd all have been forced to take the blue pill, wallowing in a horrible world where The Matrix as we know it doesn't exist. So that about does it for this little special from Sci-Fi Night, and what do you guys think? Should we with Chowskis be more vocal about the inspiration we drew from the Invisibles? Let me know in the comments below, where you can also give us some suggestions for future content. I'm your host, Sebastian Mendel Martinez, and I'll catch you guys next time. Close your eyes, it almost feels like you're eating runny eggs. Yeah, a bowl of snot.